Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are going to basically look at how to remove the lead and the human when you have followed the steps from a previous video, which means that compositing is straightforward. was a really confusing introduction. Essentially in this video, we're basically gonna go through how to do composites. This is Zara. She is a Fox Terrier and she is awesome. As part of this shoot, she needed to remain on lead the whole time. So she is on lead here with the owner stood here. Now in an ideal world, the lead would be more like this, coming out the back of the dog's head. Um, and to be honest with you, it makes sense for me to use that picture rather than this one, but we're gonna do this one anyway. So I need to basically remove the owner and the lead. You absolutely could go ahead and clone all of this out, but that's gonna take some time and I'm all for efficiency. So if I've got a dog on a lead, I will make sure that any of my setups are done in a way that I take a second picture. The second picture is always taken using back button focus on the camera so that the focus point and the focus plane doesn't move. So in this situation, my second picture was this one, which is a empty shot. It's not perfectly lined up. So there is some work to do there, but other than that, it's pretty solid. The same thing happened with the little dash hand where there were empty shots taken from that one as well. And essentially what we're going to do is remove the owner and the lead from this in a clean, straightforward and efficient fashion. Because if you're wasting time doing things like this, guys, you've got better things to spend your time on. So as you can see from this empty shot here, there is actually slightly more of the lower edge of the log and the angle isn't perfect. That's fine because that's basically, we're just gonna fix that through. You could use this exact same technique for removing you know, dogs from pictures for doing head swaps, for doing eye swaps, for doing anything you want. So essentially what we do is we need to open both of those images up into Photoshop. Remember that the treatment on both should be the same. So this has had the same exposure and white balance adjustments on as this one. And it has also been run through Topaz Labs AI Denoise because we were in the woods and it was raining. So we'll open those up when we are in Photoshop, we will have both of those pictures. Now you can see that they aren't lined up, right? This one is angled up slightly, this one is lower. So what we need to do is match them. Now I actually prefer more of the log being in shot and therefore instead of putting the clear background version onto the busy version, I'm gonna do it the other way around and I'm actually gonna put the dog into my other one. So how do we do that? Well, guys, you need to select all of one of your pictures. To select all, press Control and A or Command and A on your keyboard. That will make sure that there is a little marching ants around the entire frame. When you've done that, you need to copy. Now just use your keyboard shortcuts, which are Command C or Control C on a Windows. Go to your other image and paste. So that's Command V or Control V if you're on a Windows. What that's done is that's put my dog on my empty picture there, right? So if we line them up perfectly again, like so, you will see that we're out of line. Let's look a little bit closer here at the log. Can you see we are out of line? However, can you also see that the focus point remains in the exact same section of the, that log, right? So we need to line it up and we need to line it up as best as we possibly can. So look for objects and elements that don't move. So for me, I tend to look for landmarks, I guess. So I'm looking at this edge over here and I'm also looking probably at the back of the log here and potentially this groove in the bark. You need to have at least two or three different things that you're looking at. Then make sure that your top layer is at low opacity. So maybe 50% thereabouts. And you can see 
that there's loads of this that doesn't match up now. So what you need to do is match up kind of as best you can somewhere. So that's pretty much there matched up, but then all of this is wrong, right? And you can see that there's a rotational shift. So if we zoom out and look at that rotation, so Zara needs to rotate this way to make this composite work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Command T or Control T, which brings up your transform options here. And I'm going to start to rotate. And when you do that, you can fine tune where you're putting it and assess, do we need any more? Yes, we do need a little bit more. Do it in little bits. Now, there is a slightly different angle of view, so we're not gonna get it perfect, but our focus needs to be on these landmarks. Just pretty much there, I think. Slightly higher up. I'm using my keyboard just to nudge. That is as good as this shot is gonna get because there's a rotation um, over the log there. So if we turn that on and put it up to full, there's still a shift, but it's because the angle of the shot changed. This is why it's super important to stay still between your shots. But this is absolutely fine and we can work with this. This is not a problem at all. So with that done and your lines done, you then need to mask out things you don't want. Therefore, that includes any hard edges like that, any hard edges and the human in the lead. So we just add a mask down here at the bottom and with a mask on at this layer that we've got on the top, grab a brush, a big soft brush. It's very important that it's soft at this stage and the mask is white therefore we paint with black and you just want to start to bring bits that you want back in, taking away the hard edges and then when you get to the lead, you need to be much more careful, much more careful. I can't stress how careful you need to be here, guys. And you need to go through your general edges and your cleanup. Now you could absolutely add your mask, masking around hair, which I'll link above. You could absolutely add your hair mask to this section to speed up going around the edge of the dog. And on a wiry dog like this, that mask will act perfectly. And we just blend it out so we can get a bit of a bigger brush. And remember, bokeh is circular, so therefore we need to make the circle complete and bring some of that through. So with that done, because we're focusing on the area where the two connect, that is pretty solid. So then the last thing to do is clean up your objects, which are sharp, because there is a shift there, right? So what I tend to do is I actually use a harder brush, right? And I start to bring through working with the hard edges in the reference document, the reference image, which is the, just the blank log. And I start to bring through chunks with hard edges. So the hard edge gives you a better cut, I guess, of objects that are sharp. So now there is a nice soft line that follows actually the shadow of the dog, which is great, um, down there. And you would never guess that that is a composite. You would just never guess that. So then what I do, because I think it's worthwhile mentioning, I duplicate both of those layers so that there's two copies of my layers. I then merge 
the top two. That becomes my working document. And then I group the bottom two layers. So you will need to have a new background. So you can either duplicate that or just double click to unlock the layer. And then select those two and then Command G or Control G to group. And then I will call that my composite <laughs> without a capital O. And what that does is that keeps that safe if you ever need to go back to it. But this is then our working document, right? And then you continue with your edit. And that's literally it. So if you had a situation where you had two dogs, you would do the exact same thing where you could do head swaps and whatnot from one picture to another by overlaying one on the other and then masking through. The finished version of this image should be on the screen now for you guys so you can see where it went after being edited. If you have any questions, please do drop them down in the comments box below. Find us on Instagram because I would love to see you there and I guess, you know, guys, I will just see you soon. If you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and click the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it.